Good morning, students. This video is for class six, science, and today also we will continue with physics. Today our topic of discussion will be one more non-contact forces that is magnetic force. You all must have seen a magnet pulling any magnetic substance from a distance. That means it is not necessary that the magnetic substance as well as the magnet has to come in contact with each other so that the magnet can attract the magnetic substance towards itself. So this gap, when the force of a magnet acts at a distance, this is known as magnetic force. The force exerted between two magnets or between a magnet and a magnetic material like iron is known as magnetic force. Like electrostatic force, magnetic force is either attractive or repulsive. That means, same when you see electrostatic force, you see protons, when they are positively charged, they repel each other. And when they are negatively charged, they they also they repel. But suppose if one is positively charged and the other is negatively charged, they attract each other. In the same way, magnet also, a magnet has two poles. north pole and south pole now if you bring any any other object which has another magnet suppose you bring if this is the north pole and this is the south pole if you bring both the like poles side by side they will not attract but in fact they will repel each other they will move away from each other now you bring if you bring one more magnet towards the south end south pole and both the uh, poles are same they will repel each other they will move away from each other so, a magnet has two poles, as I have told you, north pole and south pole. Two similar poles of two different magnets repel each other. That means if you find, if you bring two same poles towards each other, they will not attract, in fact they will move away from each other. North pole repels north pole and south pole repels south pole. But two opposite poles, when brought closer to one another, attracts each other. Now if you bring unlike poles, that means one north pole and the other is south pole, then they will attract each other they will not repel because the poles are not same they are different that is north pole attracts south pole magnetic force between two magnets does not require any contact between the magnets hence it is a non contact force so for a magnet for a magnet to attract attract any magnetic substance or any other magnet it is not necessary that they have to be in touch with that in touch with each other they will act at a distance that means they will act from a distance if you keep gap between them still they will act so that is the magnetic thing now from the above activity they have given you an activity where they show magnet so that magnet for magnetic force is a non-contact force that means you keep an object you keep a mag magnet here and if you bring here on nail on nails they will attract it will get attracted now this magnet has a magnetic field that means this attraction force of attraction can be up to a certain limit the area the area within which the magnet will attract that is known as magnetic field that is known as magnetic field now suppose if you keep a magnet in this room and if i want an want any magnetic substance that is kept in another room to be attracted it will not attract so that magnet which is kept here it has a capacity that up to maybe one meter it can attract so that one meter around the magnet is known as the magnetic field from the above activity we note that initially when the magnet is placed at a considerable distance from the pin there is no attraction between them the distance at which the pins start to get attracted to the magnet given an idea give an idea of the magnetic field of the magnet so the distance now if you keep a, keep a pin here it is not getting attracted now slowly and slowly if you bring this pin closer to this and if it falls within the boundary of the mag within the boundary from where the magnet can attract the pin that boundary is known as the magnetic field magnetic field is the region around a magnet which uh, within which it can attract a magnetic material that is what i have said next is measurement of force
measurement of force measure like we measure weight like we measure length force can also be measured and it has to be measured the strength of force is known as the magnitude of force so force has a strength now if you apply uh, if you apply any pressure harder that means that force will be stronger now if you push if you push suppose you push uh, the door of a refrigerator you don't need to apply too much force but if you want to if you want to push a very very heavy object you need to apply more force so this force depends upon the type of work you do and you have to measure this this measurement is the strength of the force is known as magnitude and this measurement is known as the measurement of force force is a measurable physical quantity like mass or length since application of force result in the change of size when you apply force what does what is the result it either changes the shape it either changes the size it either either changes the uh, speed or it changes the direction so both force has both magnitude and direction the strength of force the amount the quantity of force you apply is actually known as the magnitude of force and is represented by a number the si unit of force is newton so the si unit is newton and the symbol that we use is capital l the direction in which the force is applied is generally represented by an arrow so suppose if you are applying the force towards north the arrow will be facing towards north if you are applying the force towards south the arrow will be facing towards south so this arrow indicates the direction in which you apply the force if a force of 2 newton is acting on an object for a certain time pulling a block towards the right with a force 2 newton it can be so it can be represented as shown alongside now with 2 newton force the block can be moved towards the right by a certain distance now instead of 2 newton force if we apply 20 newton so suppose if there is a block and if you apply 2 newton maybe the block will move up to suppose 3 meter now instead of this 2 newton if you apply 20 newton that means more force you are applying so instead of this 3 meter it it will result in 30 meter so the object will move keeping the weight of the object same now if you push the object which uh, by 2 newton force of 2 newton and if the weight of the object is 10 kg now if you change the weight that distance the displacement of the distance that means the distance the object will move will not be same so you have to keep what the same you have to keep the weight of the object same now 20 newton is obviously more than 2 newton which means that more force is applied on the block and so the block will move by a greater distance more distance resultant force what do you mean by resultant force what if if you apply the force in the same direction if two forces applied in the same direction or what if two forces are applied in the object in opposite direction this is the, what the result you will get is the resultant force now suppose if you take me if i push if i push an object now suppose an object if i push with say 20 newton and if one of my friend pushes in the same direction with more 20 newton so the resultant will be 40 newton that means total force applied on to that object to move it is 40 newton now suppose that same object i move it in in this direction in the right hand side suppose at 40 newton and my friend pulls that in the opposite direction with 30 newton so what will be the resultant the resultant will be 10 newton that is 40 minus 30 is 10 newton this is the resultant force suppose we pull now this is what it is written whatever i have explained this is what it is written suppose we pull suppose two people pull a block from opposite sides or same side there is more than one force acting on the object in such cases the resultant force needs to be calculated to determine the effect of force what will be the effect of force the resultant force is is calculated by considering considering whether the force is forces are acting on the same direction or in the opposite direction suppose if the forces are acting on the same direction if the forces act along the same direction then the resultant force is obtained by adding the magnitude of both the forces the direction of the resultant force is same 
as those of the original forces. So when you move this, it will move in the same direction in which you push it. Now forces. Now suppose if forces are acting in the opposite direction. Now I pull it towards this side with 40 newton. One of my friend pulls in the opposite direction with 30 newton. Now who is applying more force? I am applying more force. And by how much? So the resultant force will be. I will pull this pull this object towards myself by 10 newton. This is what it is explained here. Yeah. If the forces act in the opposite direction, the resultant force is obtained by taking the difference between the two forces. The direction of the resultant force is, uh, is along the direction of the force that has a mag greater magnitude. That means, I said, the direction of this movement of this object will be towards my, di towards my direction. Why? Because I am applying more force, greater force than my friend. Hence, here a force of 10 Newton is acting on the block towards the right and another force of 7 Newton towards the left. The resultant force will be 10 Newton minus 7 Newton. The resultant force will act in the direction of the force having a greater magnitude, having more force. That is towards the right here. So I hope all of you have understood this. Now, the, now suppose, now suppose one more thing. Now suppose a block of wood, I am pulling it towards myself with 10 Newton, one of my fr friend pulling it towards himself with also 10 Newton. In this case, the resultant will be 0 because 10 Newton minus 10 Newton is equal to 0. So the displacement, the movement of the block will be 0. The block will remain in its own place. because. From both the side, the amount, the magnitude of the forces, force applied is the same. So, so the resultant will always be zero. This is what is written. If two forces have the same magnitude, have the same strength, and act in opposite direction, then the resultant force is always zero. The resultant force will be 10 newton minus 10 newton that is equal to zero. This is equivalent to no force acting on the object and the object will remain stationary that means the object will not move at all this is the resultant force next is spring balance to measure force sometimes we use spring balance you can see the picture spring balance to measure force now remember children you all have to go through all the activities and if there is any sum you have to understand the sums are very simple as I have told you. If the forces acting in the same direction, the new uh, forces will be added. If the forces are acting in the opposite direction, it will be subtracted. A spring balance gives the weight of the object hung on it. So if you can see the object, if, an, if you put an object in the spring balance, whatever is hung, hung, it will give the weight of that. We have seen that weight is the measure of the gravitational force exerted by the earth. So we have already learn this earlier what is weight weight is actually the pull of the gravitation uh, pull of the earth the gravitational pull that is exerted by the earth that is known as weight hence a spring balance measures gravitational force because equivalent if the pull of the earth is the weight that means it is actually measuring the measuring the gravitational force it is actually measuring the pull the pressure uh, force that is acted by the surface of the earth also, the weight of the object stretches or compresses the spring in the balance depending on the type of spring balance. Hence, it can be measured. Hence, it can give the measure of the spring force as well. So, if you see the two pictures, in one object it is hung, so you will get the measurement. In one object it is placed on top. So, the pressure that is exerted by the, the pressure, the weight that is exerted by all the, the objects that is kept on it, whatever pressure it is exerted, it is actually the measurement of it. So you can use either one to measure the gravitational force or to measure the force. So children, I hope you have understood till here. So for today, we will keep it till here. In the next class, we will start with friction. So for today, up to this much, thank you class.